breakfast call dialogue widening your horizons Hi, this is Arlene and you are listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. Uh, today we have uh, someone, a YB, uh, to discuss with us about something that is happening in Penang right now. It's regarding a 200-year-old Siamese village that is on the verge of destruction. So with me on the line today is YB Yap Su Hui. How are you? Um, I'm good, thanks Arlene. Thanks for having me. So, uh, YB Yap Su Hui, you are an S- State Assembly woman for Politicus. How, w- when does this uh, problem with uh, the uh, demolition of the 200-year-old Siamese village started? Um, well, actually, uh, the this, this piece of land has been in and out of the courts and I'm brought in a few, um, you know, there's a few questions surrounding it for quite some time already. I mean, I, I have court documents since the 1970s. But I guess uh, where this current development is concerned, um, uh, we caught wind about it uh, in April this year when the, uh, the, the developers or uh, developers who are the Penang Burmese trustees actually um, submitted uh, an application to the local government to uh, ask for permission to plan for a hotel in that area. So, so, so they, they will replace it with, I mean, they will develop hotel and other commercial buildings within that co- area where the Siamese uh, people are living in the village? Uh, correct. So, um, they're intending to build a, a, a five-story uh, hotel as well as uh, some uh, shops and uh, office space mm-hmm. in the building. So... The Siamese village was claimed to be 200 year old in history. Perhaps a bit of a background about uh, the Siamese people and the village itself. I have to say that um, I'm not an authority on uh, the history, uh, but from my understanding, um, there have been migrations from Thailand to Penang since the 1800s, um, or perhaps even before, but uh, we do know that um, uh, you know, due to in, uh, internal you know, struggles in, 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 in Thailand uh, back then, that several Siamese, uh, this, um, Siamese people had migrated over to Penang. And um, the land that we're talking about uh, was one of the main settlement areas for the Siamese. The... There are not as many Siamese in Penang compared to places like Kedah and Kelantan uh, anymore in Malaysia these days. But back then, um, Penang was a significant place for the Siamese, and um, the land, the, the 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 village you're talking about is one of is, is the last uh, set, community remaining of Siamese who had migrated to Penang. What kind of interesting or notable uh, architecture that you can find at the Siamese village that? Is more, there is more reason for them to preserve the village itself? Well, within the village, it's, it's mainly residential uh, village houses, uh, but in the surrounding area, uh, the it, surrounding area has about 90% of all the um, Siamese heritage buildings and culture uh, that is that has been featured even in our documentaries in Thailand, and we had, we do have a Siamese heritage map uh, for Penang as well. So buildings in the surrounding area include a uh, reclining uh, Buddha temple that's been around since the 1700s. Um, the, there there are houses where diplomats, kings, princesses of, of Thailand have. Um, uh, lived in when they migrated, when, when they moved to to to, Thail- uh, to Malaysia uh, in the 1800s. So, so there are a lot of uh, historical Siamese buildings, uh, or, or, or historical buildings with Siamese heritage, I should say, uh, in the area. And the fact that the and the, the fact that the community still lives there adds a uh, uh, make adds a richer dimension to 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 and it gives context to all the the, the historical the Siamese heritage buildings that are around there. So at least you don't only just see the remaining one or two heritage buildings, but you actually there's also a community that has descended from that time 
um, and you actually understand how the Siamese people and the Siamese community are related to the buildings that are there. Mm-hmm. So when I talk about buildings besides the Siamese temple, mainly we're talking about um, buildings that were lived by uh, on you know, in Burma. There's a Bangkok Lane, uh, Bangkok Lane, and Cinnamon House, and several of the the um, bungalows that used to be lived by the Siamese who live here. Penang mm-hmm. uh, is a um, UNESCO recognized city where a lot of uh, rich diversity uh, of culture and also architecture is Siamese village fall under the UNESCO protected uh, area where the culture and and society needs to be preserved? Uh, actually it doesn't and perhaps that's the reason why we need to um, draw attention to, to, the, to the Siamese uh, village. The thing is that the UNESCO heritage site is known. Uh, the UNESCO heritage site in Penang is known for its cult- for for its history and the cultural diversity and the fact that there were, uh, you know, uh, migrants uh, who who had you know settled there many years ago. But the problem is that there's so much attention to Georgetown these days that people maybe forget about the other sites that are also historically important that's outside of the World Heritage Site, and um, Kampung Siam is one of them. Um, it's called Kampung Siam uh, locally. Yeah, we yeah we have we yeah the, the 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 people who live in the community refer to it as that. So so, um, uh, you know, I think I think uh, I wish to me I don't think we should allow the UNESCO World Heritage Site to overshadow the 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 other historical assets, the other cultural heritage assets that are in on the island. Um, and uh, the, the fact that uh, Plauticus, the area where the, the land is, is rich in the history and heritage of the Siamese community should be something that is recognized and, and we should also save and preserve the Siamese culture there even though it's not in the UNESCO World Heritage mm-hmm. Site. How big it is the population, the Siamese Burmese population? Well, we have about, um, there are there are about 15 uh, homes, 15 residential buildings, um, and 10 businesses, so 10 small businesses along the road. Mm-hmm. In Penang right now, because Penang is facing rapid development, um, besides the Siamese Buddhist uh, village, are there any uh, like small pockets of community facing similar sort of situation where they have to lose their land and culture in order to make way for development? I mean, I think because, you know, being a developing country and also there we, st- we, st- we still have a lot of um, pockets of land where there are squatters, where they have lived there uh, before the, um, uh, you know, before we started having 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 land titles and, and rental and, and you know uh, other systems in place, so there are. Um, but then the the difference between the Simon's Village and perhaps most of the other pockets uh, is the fact that there the the Simon's Village has got historical significance, has got heritage significance, and I don't think it should be equated. Um, you know, like 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 the other lands that may be earmarked for development. Mm-hmm. The besides the fact that the uh, this Siamese community is the only remaining community that Siamese community that will that shows us um, that we are connected with uh, that uh, that our history is connected with the history of Thailand. Yeah, and um, it's also the oldest for the Penang Siamese community, isn't it? Oldest in Penang, correct. Oldest and, and, and probably the only in Penang, actually. Mm-hmm, probably the only, the, the o- only one. The, the, only, the only remaining intact uh, Siamese community in Penang, where you have several Siamese families still living on the same piece of land. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, many have lived there for five, six generations. They still speak the Siamese language. Um, and because they are so close to the other, other Siamese heritage building so, so close to the temple, their cultural identity is still intact. So, um, you know, by, 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 by losing this, 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 this space for the community, uh, it, it, it's not just about, about people moving out, it's actually a whole uh, you, you, heritage, a whole culture being forgotten. Mm-hmm. Um, 
well, at least the risk being forgotten unless something else is done. Let, let's focus on the risk that they face. Since 1970, risk of uh, being demolished. So what happened uh, what, what happened in the 1970s, starting from there? Well, actually, 1970, it wasn't uh, that it was being demolished. But um, just, I think we should we should go back and give a bit of a um, historical background to the land. Um, actually, the it's all the way back it, in the in 1845, in the year 1845, 30th May, uh, May of 1845, where the um, uh, East India Company, on behalf of the Her Majesty Queen of Victoria in the UK, um, granted uh, that the Burmese and Siamese community who were living on the land, um, they, she she granted that land in trust for the communities there, and it's supposed to be held by the trustees um, for the benefit uh, and the management of the affairs of the temple for the of the, the Siamese and Burmese temple in the area. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so actually, the the land is is uh, supposed to be used uh, for the benefit of the Burmese and the Siamese community. And at that time, in 1845, uh, two Burmese trustees and two Siamese trustees were actually appointed to 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 you know as, to in, in trust uh, to, to to manage that land. Um, but over time, uh, what happened was that uh, you know the, the Trustees have have passed away, and it was it was up to the Burmese and Siamese communities to to appoint new trustees for that land. Um, but then uh, there were there was at least forty year forty about forty five years where the Burmese did not formally have uh, trustees for for that land um, between the year uh, nineteen twenty eight up to the year nineteen seventy two. Um, they didn't actually go to court to to appoint new trustees. For that land, so the Burmese were, were sort of um, the Burmese had had did not pursue their right to that land uh, during that time, um, and which is why uh, we now see more Siamese on the on on that land and more si- activity of Siamese on that land, and you don't really see and there are no more Burmese descendants on that land. But nonetheless, um, in the year 1972. Um, the Burmese uh, realized that um, they they had not um, they had not pursued their right for the land and 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 they had sought to to for for their Burmese trustees to be recognized also as trustees of that land uh, because the pro- previous trustees had passed away for the for the four years ago. Um, so that was that was when uh, that our early at least in my hand the earliest records of um, of uh, what's Jalan happening Burma. with the land. The, the, the land, um, and uh, after that, um, I think there have been uh, there have been a bit of contention between the Burmese trustees and the Siamese trustees as to um, how the land should be managed. And eventually, um, it was the land initially was a much larger parcel of land, so but eventually it was uh, split into two so that the Siamese um, trustees could manage one half of it and then uh, the Burmese trustees who manage the other half of it. Can, can so I interrupt you for a while? What mm. exactly is the difference between the Burmese and Siamese uh, society, a uh, community within the area itself? Is uh, Do they have any cultural differences besides they come from different areas? Uh, well, the... the well, I mean, they're clearly from from uh, descendants from from the different different countries. Um, they speak different language. I mean, the Burmese food and Thai food is is is, a bit, is different. Um, their their music is different. The culture the culture is totally different. Um, they are, uh, the the community who live there. Uh, both both Burmese and Siamese are generally Buddhists. Um, but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, despite the shared religion, uh, generally they're different. I think um, it, it appears that back in the time when East India granted both communities the land, uh, I think uh, both the Siamese and the Burmese had uh, closer uh, relationship, and the, the, the communities appear to be perhaps intermingled uh, within the, within the village. Uh, but I think over time, the community, both com- Siamese and Burmese, have you know set up on their own path, and uh, both communities have, have kind of separated over time, uh, such that you don't really see the Burmese community anymore um, um, there. (coughs) 
So although I have to say that the Burmese, there's a Penang Burmese Society building and there's still a number of them uh, holding uh, activities on that land, but they don't actually live there anymore. Um, so the situation we have at hand now is that um, the Burmese, uh, Burmese Trust has owns or has rights to half that land, uh, but the people who live there are Siamese descendants, mm. are mainly Siamese descendants. So um, there's also another uh, issue to to deal with besides the existing issue of development on that particular area. Is that is that it? Because uh, the developer, the developer is actually a company that's a joint venture between the Burmese, Penang Burmese trustees. So there are four Burmese trustees uh, with a developing company. So uh, part, the, the developer for the hotel is Five Star Heritage in Jiren Bahad. Um, and Five Star Heritage in Jiren Bahad um, is a company that's set up where that includes all the Burmese trustees um, as well as another company, Ayamas uh, in Jiren Bahad. Mm-hmm. So when did this idea of having a hotel, a five-star hotel, and other for other developments started or mo- uh, were being mooted? Would it was it like during ten years ago or pre two thousand eight? Well, you have to ask the Burmese trustees when the the idea of building hotels uh, came to their minds. Uh, was, it, was it under the purview of the current Penang government? Back even back in two thousand and eight, uh, two thousand and nine, they had already um, they, they, uh, written to the state government um, to to well um, about their intention to develop a hotel there. But on both occasions, um, the, their, their application was rejected. I'm only aware of these two applications because it came in during the time of the current state government. But I am not sure if they had submitted applications before that as well. Um, but so 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 far, um, the state government had not uh, has not approved has any not approved. hotel development on their land. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's mm. the the trick. The problem is not so much. Uh, I think the problem comes in because um, the state land is. Uh, even though the, the, the original grant of that land, um, the, the grant that gives the trustees rights over that land back in 1845, that grant states that the land should not be transferred or sold and should only be used uh, for the benefit of the uh, community there. Um, so they, 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 should not, they should not be uh, earning money um, out of it. But then um, the, in 1996, uh, the state, the local government then actually gazetted the development control and uh, planning policy um, that zoned that area to be uh, a commercial area, Perniaga An Am, we call it in Bahasa, uh, a commercial area. Uh, so then the, the fact that instead of being zoned as a, a religious or cultural area, being zoned as a commercial area now allows for the, uh, the trustees to... to Built something commercial there, um, so I think uh, uh, the residents of the community is, is now interested in pursuing whether the this zoning is valid, considering the fact that the grants actually awards the land only for the um, use of the temple and the community, mm-hmm. the Burmese and Chinese community. About the Penang Burmese Trust Properties Group, uh, which reported that four Malaysian Burmese individuals. Uh, have been is part of it and claim to be the lands trustee. Uh, yeah. When it comes to the Kampung Siam itself, is it uh, do, do they have like a ketua kampung, a, a head village, or do they uh, and whatever decision that is being made on the land is it based on consultation uh, among all villages like what we see in the Portuguese settlement as well as the Chetty community in in, in Melaka? There is uh, there's no Ketua Kampung, um, so they but it's it's not that big a community. We're talking about fifteen um, houses, ten businesses, so they all know each other. Um, and when they received uh, notices to to vacate, to to, to move out of their homes, uh, it was quite easy for them to get together and 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 you know discuss uh, amongst themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, the charity community is also facing in Malacca is also facing the threats of development uh, surrounding their uh, 
their village and they uh, have to go on to I mean they have to to get the help of governments and also uh, politicians to highlight this issue so when it comes to the Siamese Burmese community there what kind of plan of action they have done so far in terms of highlighting the issue among uh, society there well the self-organized and they have now um, because the, the thing is that even though the Samish community, uh, village and the descendants have been living there for 200 years um, actually a lot of uh, Penangites are still not aware of the existing uh, existence of this community um, it's tucked away uh, behind uh, some shops and a police uh, a large police station so people walk by and, and they don't know that there's just all these houses in there uh, in, in, uh, behind a small alley so um, their, their, their problem is even though they, 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 they culturally and, 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 and uh, they're culturally significant, uh, they add such a rich dimension of heritage to, to the area, um, uh, a lot of Penangites don't know that they exist. So uh, in, on, on uh, Wednesday that just passed, um, they organized themselves to, to put up some banners and notices in, in that area. Um, to, to to inform people of the plight that they're that they're being uh, they risk having to move out of their homes and that they are there and that we have the Siamese community there, um, and this has managed to draw a little bit of attention from from the locals uh, from people. Um, uh, it's good that that people are aware that the Siamese community is there. Uh, now that people are aware, I think we hope that the not it's not just pressure from politicians like myself and the state government, uh, but also hopefully the pressure from the people will convince the landowner, the uh, five-star heritage, that they should not proceed with um, the, the hotel uh, without um, having c- come up with, with some plans on, on how they can negotiate an amicable um, um, you know, way forward with the existing residents and existing businesses there uh, and plans for that uh, so that the the heritage and the fact that Samis are there can be recognized in whatever they do to that land. I think we're not, I, I think most of us uh, are not against development per se, but we just want to make sure that whatever plans there are for the land, the residents that have been there for so long um, and, and the, the, the historical and the social value of them there would be recognized um, and you know, the due actions taken to, to make sure that the fact that there is not forgotten forever in history. Um, and I think the other problem is is I, we a lot of us are skeptical about what, uh, of whether a hotel is suitable for that area because I uh, want it's 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 quite a high traffic area. There are a lot of pedestrian as well as vehicle traffic, um, and at the moment there are only um, you know one story type of shop houses. Um, if uh, putting a five-story large hotel there, I think we were going to have problems with the tourist buses that come in and the taxis and that type of thing as well. So uh, I think there's a lot for, for, for us to consider. And uh, we just hope that the, the developer will come forward and, and take, take these things into consideration and be able to, to discuss with the residents there um, you know, how their, their history and heritage can be protected as well. Uh, whatever they do to the building. And the thing is, for the state government side, I think we, uh, we the current state government is very concerned uh, why back in, um, um, you know, back in as, 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 as early as 1986 and before, um, part of that land, the parcel of that land was zoned as commercial, as Paniaga and Am. Um, if we look at the grants by... by uh, the East India Company, um, the, the grant that holds the trustees' uh, rights to the land, uh, clearly it's supposed to be for religious and cultural purposes only. So um, uh, we ha- we, I think we have to, the state has to go back to see uh, why that, that, that land is, it has been zoned that way mm-hmm. um, and, uh, is it, is, is, and, and what we can do to, to change that. So, uh, YB, yep, so we, we will take a short break when we return more discussion on this particular issue. ASEAN Breakfast Call Dialogue, widening your horizons. 
Hi, this is Eileen. Hi, this is Gary. And we are uh, together with us is YB Yap Suhui to discuss. Uh, she's a state assembly woman for Pulau Tiskos. Uh, together we'll be discussing about the 200-year-old Siamese village, which is on the verge of demolition. So uh, I have a question regarding on, uh, this is a comment that I'm reading from a news, uh, one of the new online news today, uh, which is a comment by the Penang Gerakan Secretary Or Tong Kiong. He said that the state go- it, it is the state government's duty to preserve and conserve heritage. He also mentioned that um, the Penang Chief Minister need to use all his authority to stop the demolition. So when it comes to uh, the state government of Penang right now, what what are they doing to stop this? Well, in the first place, uh, he set the, the record right that it is it was during uh, the Gakan government's um, uh, time when the land was zoned into commercial use. Um, and it, it's not, we have to, I have to also correct that the, the village is not, not on the verge of, of demolition. Um, the developers hasn't even had planning approval yet, so so they're quite far from from uh, being allowed to, to to demolish the village, or, or their plans haven't been approved. Um, uh, so at, at this stage, all uh, decisions with regard to the, to the application has been withheld, um, and um, the state government is, is not approving um, any development in that in that place. So what we, I mean, what I, I am requesting from from the state government at this stage is to is, is for us to look into why back in 1996 that was rezoned to be uh, commercial uh, commercial land. Also, actually, um, so so for your information, the the since uh, when the East India Company uh, gave the land to the community there, it has been subdivided twice. Originally, it was a much uh, bigger piece of land. Originally, it was um, about tw- it was twelve twelve hundred uh, sorry twelve thousand twelve yeah twelve hundred thousand um, square meters, um, and since then it's been split um, into into two so that the Siamese and Burmese can take that land. And then after that, the Burmese land was further subdivided into two, and actually, it because of this second subdivision um, that. Uh, that you know, the, the small bit that's at zoned as commercial is allowed to to be developed. So I think two things we need to investigate is to uh, why the second sub uh, division was was allowed, and also why um, that area was rezoned. Um, the the second subdivision did not go through the current uh, Penang State Government, so we are still looking into um, how uh, that happened. And um, and why the land was rezoned. So when it comes to the people right now, they are of course protesting and all. So uh, is there going to be a, a dialogue soon uh, with one of their representatives? Hello. The yeah. developer. Sorry. The de- actually the, the developer. Um, uh, the developer contacted the residents. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, by letter uh, through their lawyer, through through the developer's lawyer, uh, in June uh, this year, since starting June this year, um, and I believe they have also gone to meet a few of the residents there. Subsequent to their meeting, um, the residents did ask the developer, how you know, mm. uh, if you, if we are to move, um, are you able to to compensate us for the loss of our homes and the loss of of, of our, our space? Um, uh, the thing is that the, the developer then returned with offers ranging from 10,000 to 30,000 uh, for the villages there. These houses are actually um, a, a lot of them, and it's 30,000 for for uh, you know for for the type of homes that are set up there. Um, they they did not feel that it it was fair compensation, and so that was communicated uh, to uh, the developer. I think. Um, and you know, but I think the, de- the developer did not, does not seem to be uh, willing to consider further, and which is why it, they they have taken the residents to court. I think on my side, uh, we would I, I would appeal to the developer to continue negotiating uh, with the existing residents there, 
Um, and you know, I think to to actually open up dialogue with them. I, I think at the moment, uh, the the channels of communication, the communication between the existing residents and the developer, is is not is not very good. But apart from uh, actually opening up a dialogue, is there any possibility at all that the developers would consider another location for the project? Because the thing is, this is not just this is not your average developer mm -hmm. that could just buy land somewhere and develop. Uh, yeah, the developer some of them are Burmese, the, right? Yes. Uh, so the developer we are talking about are the Penang Burmese trustees themselves. Um, so I think that and I'm I'm not aware that the Penang Burmese Trust has got other pieces of land elsewhere. Uh, so I think, for as far as they're concerned, um, this is this is their their piece of land. Mm. So when it comes to Penang itself, I mean, it seems like uh, all these developments shows that Penang has a booming industry, especially tourism industry. Uh, mm. For Penang's direction in the future, like what kind of Penang that the state government wants to portray, does it want to portray a Penang that is full of um, culture and heritage or Penang that is, you know, full of hotels and really... Um, uh, and full of those kind of uh, buildings and development and all that? I mean, Penang is full of culture and heritage. That's something that will always be um, the... Uh, I think Penang is very rich uh, in whether, whether in, in, in the culture, both in the UNESCO World Heritage Site as well as outside. I don't think we would ever lose that. I, I find that unimaginable. Um... So, but the problem is, we do, I mean, we do. I have to admit, we do uh, have. We do have a lack of hotels. We do. Uh, we do need more hotels. That there, there are more tourists wanting to come, uh, and and most and a lot of times, uh, our hotels are at peak capacity. Uh, but nonetheless, I think the state recognizes that um, you know you, you can't just allow hotels to boom everywhere. Uh, the regulations for hotels, the requirements for has to has to be uh, fulfilled as well. So um, just because we need more hotels doesn't mean we're going to allow any hotel development to happen. If there's one city or one uh, island city that Penang aspire to be uh, all of in anywhere in the world, what would that sit, uh, island city would uh, would be? Penang is unique in its own. Um, I think just just come in the vibe, uh, how we have. Uh, we have that that, that um, sort of it's, it's it's dynamic and vibrant, but at the same time, uh, you you know you you can you can you can you can watch you can you can, you can watch contemporary art uh, in in the setting of uh, historical buildings. Um, you know, it's 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 something that will always be part of Penang. Penang people are very proud of their heritage, uh, and you know it's. Yeah, the the it we we will we you we Penang has an identity of its own. Uh, whether you want the beaches, whether you you're interested in 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 in, in people and and colors and food and 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 especially food, isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know. I think Penang is famous for its food, but there's so much more to Penang. It, it, the smells, the sights, the buildings, um, the 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 art. Uh, you know, it's all there. Uh, there's Penang Hill, there's the uh, the other activities as well. So, so I don't think uh, I. I mean, having visited a few islands, uh, islands, island cities in, in the world, I, I do not see some. I cannot. I, I do not see anything that is uh, that is similar or close to Penang in terms of the concentration of culture, the concentration of um, of history in an island that is also that is also that is also modern in some areas as mm. well. So, last question of today. What's next uh, for state government as well as the villages themselves? Are they going to hold a protest or are they going to uh, appeal to court? Or what's next for all of you? The residents hope that um, the, 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 you know, the uh, Penangites and other people from, from across Malaysia and the world could lend their support to that cause and hopefully appeal to the senses of the developer to say that uh, they cannot just push through. Uh, they cannot just push through the intention to build a hotel without uh, working with the residents there on how they can preserve the, the the heritage and the culture of the Siamese community to make sure that it's not forgotten, it is recognised, 
And it's not just heritage, it's not just culture, but also how the people who have lived there for so many generations have become such an intricate part of the community there. I mean, <clears throat> uh, the, there's a family there who, who's been selling wonton me uh, for uh, in, in Platicus, and everyone recognizes him. There's a family there who sells laksa, and everyone recognizes him. The, the, the motorcycle shops, the photostat shops, all that have been part of the Platicus community, have been service providers to the Plotty Schools community for so long. I think uh, coming in and with just a, a brushstroke, uh, yeah, re- removing and destroying all that is, is something that, that I think a lot of people cannot accept. So we, we, we appeal to the senses of the developer to, to, to discuss with us you know, how we can ensure that the heritage and social value of the place is still protected, whatever they do to the land. And I think also the Burmese people, I think maybe I'm not, we're not sure uh, whether the, the four people who claim to be the Penang Burmese trustees uh, speak for all the Burmese people in Penang, for all the Burmese descendants in, in, in Malaysia. Um, I think that we would like to, uh, to, take, to, to draw attention to the fact that uh, when the land was granted, it's supposed to be for the management of the affairs of that temple. It's supposed to be for the benefit of the Burmese descendants, for the Siamese descendants. So do, 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 do the Burmese people, are con- and the Siamese people, the Siamese people certainly do not consider uh, development of the hotel to, uh, as beneficial to them. But do the Burmese people consider developing of, development of the hotel to be of benefit to them? Do the Burmese people agree uh, that the hotel should be built? So I think we would also like to hear from 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 uh, Burmese descendants in Penang what they feel about this, and we hope that that together with, with the support of the, the local community there, to the strong support we are seeing from people outside from the com- community as well, uh, we will be able to appeal to the senses of the developer um, that they need to look more seriously into the heritage and social value of that piece of land. With that, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your view. Okay, thank you.